Hey guys, back again for part two of the warm and cool fish art. Last time we were together, we created these concentric circles. I used a Sharpie so you can see them, but in reality, you wanna use a pencil because we don't want any black dark outlines. I'm gonna erase this little center circle that was the center of all of our circles. And our next step is to add the fish that are going to go on top of our concentric circles. Now, I'm saying fish because I'm doing fish, but you don't have to do fish. You can do whatever you want to. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to make a symmetrical creature or thing that you can put on top of this. Our goal is to put at least seven. So here I have a piece of paper. It's more rectangular. What I'm going to do is fold it in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. Give it a nice crease there. And what I'm going to do for my fish is I'm going to draw half of a fish. So I've got something that looks the top of the body similar to this. I'm gonna come up and around and make a fin. It looks something like this. And maybe I'll come in a little bit. And if I were to cut that out and then open it up, I should have a decent looking fish. Let's try it. Let's start over here. I'm gonna cut around the lines that I created very carefully, keeping the paper folded. The paper is still folded. And if I were to undo this, let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's a cute fish. So that is a symmetrical fish. Symmetrical meaning the same on both sides or the same on the top or the bottom. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to trace my fish several different places all over this. Before I do my fish, I wanna show you another thing that you could do if you wanted to. This piece of paper, I'm going to make a butterfly. So I fold my paper in half and write on the fold, directly on this part. So if you're pretending it's a book, so you're writing on the spine, you don't wanna write on this side. This side is the one you want. So you're writing towards the spine and I'm going to make something that looks like a butterfly. We've got a big wing. We've got a little wing. And then I'm gonna come back and do the body. What do you think? If I cut it out, will it look like a butterfly? Let's try it. I've got my little wing down here. Remember you're keeping your paper folded as you're cutting. It can get tricky. Notice how I'm turning my paper so it moves however I want it to line up with my scissors. Like this and then this teeny tiny part. It's tough, it's tough to get this. Does it look like a butterfly when I open it up? It's okay, it's not bad. So if I wanted to use this, I would put it in different spots. But I'm gonna do my fish. So using a Sharpie, so you can see it on the camera. I want you, you are going to use a pencil. I'm going to trace my fish. So I'm gonna start with maybe one right here. Not quite exactly in the middle, but kind of in the middle. And I'm gonna trace around it, holding it down with one hand and tracing with the other. I'm holding it nice and still. I might have to move my fingers a little bit in order to get to certain spots of this fish. I might have to move my pen to the top of my hand and to the bottom of my hand to get the whole thing. And look, we've got the fish. He's outlined, he's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do another fish. I don't want him to go in the same direction. He can go off of the circles too. Doesn't have to be exactly on the circles. And if you accidentally draw on your tracer like I just did, that is okay. And just to the best of my ability, I'm going to trace around, around, around. Since you're using pencil, if you make a mistake, it'll be so much easier to erase. Let's do another one. This one I'll have going to right off the page. Won't even see him, his tail. Cute little fish. Okay, here's another one. I'm gonna have him going maybe here. And see, there's no real rhyme or reason 
for the direction I'm putting these guys. They're all in different directions. They're not lined up in any specific way. It sort of looks somewhat random. We want it to look a little bit random and free and fun. So let me check in. We said we're trying to get seven. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five. Can I fit two more in there? Yes, I can. This one will go off the page. And I am tracing it off the circle, off the whole page. And then my last one, do I want his nose in? No, that would be too much of the same. So maybe I'll twist him around like this, or like this. I'll do this. Yeah, move it around. See what looks good to you. See what you like. What position looks good for the picture that you're creating? All right, I've got the drawing done. The fun part now begins. We're going to use warm colors. That's gonna be for your creature. For me, it's my fish. That's the warm. The cool colors, that's gonna be the background. I call that the BG, the background. So all the fish are gonna be warm shades, all the background colors are going to be cool. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start with the fish, which are going to be warm. So I've got a couple of warm choices here. These are all of my warm colors. I wanna pick three, I'm pick three of them. So I'm going to pick orange, pink, and yellow. I think I want these to be my three. Maybe not. Maybe? Maybe I'll do four. Let's do four. All right, these will be my four. Let's do four. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with one of the fish. And this part is going to be red. So really carefully, I'm going to make this part red. It's good if you have under paper so you don't get it on the table like I'm doing. But it's the art room, don't worry too much about it. Real markers come off, much easier than Sharpie. This one's gonna be orange, this one's gonna be yellow, this one's gonna be pink, this one will be red again. So what I'm essentially doing is making rings of color only inside the fish, or only inside the butterfly, only inside the creature that you're doing. So this is red, orange. Let me mark them. Orange, yellow, pink, red, orange, yellow, and then we're done with the fish. The fish is done. So if this is red, then this part that's coming outside of the fish is also going to be red. All of the outside parts of the fish are going to be red. If this is red, this part is also going to be red, but only the part inside the fish. This is where it gets tricky. You don't want to color in the background area because that's gonna be warm. So this is gonna be red. I'm going all the way around here with my red. This outside part is red. This outside part is red. So remember, all of the outside parts are red because that's what I'm choosing. It doesn't have to be red for you, but it all has to be the same color. Whatever color you choose, it has to be that same color. Be careful that you don't get all smudgy when you're leaning, so that happens a lot. So if you're leaning on your wet marker, it's gonna get a little sloppy. Right now, I don't have any marker there to get wet. Let me see, this one, this one, this, yep. So it gets a little tricky, but when you're done, it's gonna look awesome. Be neat. Color, 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 same one here. Okay, we've got this, it's gonna be red. It's, it's a good idea to do all of one color first. That way, you're not hogging all the markers so other people can use them, but also, it'll help you to figure out your pattern too. So I'm going around this ring, just figuring out 
everything that's going to be red for me and also this outside so I think I think I've got all my red done let's see if my pattern is going to repeat itself for any of the fish on the inside so for the fish I've got this ring is orange So every fish that falls on this outside ring is going to be orange. Only the fish, not the background. You might make a mistake. It's not unlikely that you'll make a mistake because it's kind of tough when you're into it and you're coloring and you kind of forget what's going on and what color is supposed to be what. It happens and that's okay. Don't worry if you make a mistake, if you accidentally make one part orange that was supposed to be red. No one's gonna know, probably. And it's still gonna look like an amazing piece of art. So it's really important to do one color at a time. So we've got almost all my orange rings done. The next ring for the fish is going to be yellow. Did I skip any oranges? Oh, wait a minute, no, did I, did I? No, I think we're good. Oh yes, right here. I redid the pattern. Remember it started over again. So this is gonna be orange. This is going to be orange. Notice how when I'm coloring, I'm outlining, taking my time and going around this inside and then I can go fast. So you go nice and slow on the outside and then you can go fast in the middle. Let's see this one. This one, oh, this is a big one. So it's all about creating a pattern and it's only warm. I'm gonna come back when I'm done with all the fish and then we'll start on the background, the BG, with our cool colors. See you then.